Hey everyone, Stuart here with Billionaire Blocks, and I am here with Alden. And Alden here is with uh, Ascentium EM1. So, in the world of 3D printing, this is a constantly emerging field, and we see many things just come and go. But what he is working on here, Alden is trying to find a way to revolutionize the way we see 3D printers. So, very briefly, if you could just run through what your project is about. Sure. So, 3D printing exists by building up tens of thousands of layers of plastic into whatever part that you want. The issue is that in between those layers, there's very little strength, which means that in the Z direction, you don't have near the strength as you do in the X and the Y. We believe that that is what's held 3D printing back from having the disruptive potential that we've always hoped it to have. That's what Ascentium's trying to solve. So by coating the material in a thin layer of nanoparticles, that are processed through an electromagnetic uh, field during the printing process, we're able to excite those nanoparticles, allowing for polymer chain diffusion across the interface. This yields the same strength as if the part had been injection molded, meaning that it has isotropic strength across the Z, X, and Y axes. This, we believe, will allow 3D printing to be used in functional parts, not just trinkets and prototypes, and allow 3D printing to be truly disruptive. So, in the future, what kind of applications do you see people using this machine for? So, we talk with a lot of aerospace uh, companies, a lot of defense companies, a lot of automobile manufacturers, and then we actually work on uh, prosthetic devices ourselves, taking um, load-bearing prosthetics for a much cheaper, affordable prices throughout the third world and uh, to the refugee populations across war-torn areas. So how much, how strong is this uh, in terms of numbers? Do you have, have you guys tested this out on anything? Like how much weight can it bear? So it depends on your underlying plastic. So if you're using like a PLA, which is more commodity grade plastic, then it's going to match the strength of your PLA. But you can use this uh, technology on up to the peaks and the Ultens that people are going to use to like build airplanes. Great. Now, one thing that I have noticed about this, and this is what really brought us to come to talk to you guys, is the size of this. Why is it so big? So we developed this platform um, as a way to, to build out this technology. We like this size for some of our aerospace and automotive clients. However, we're going to be able to use this technology um, through partnering with other machine manufacturers to have, have it deployed in everything from this size printer to a normal console or desktop size printer to allow really everyone in the 3D printing community to, uh, to be able to benefit from this technology. So I'm not someone that's in the aerospace industry. I'm just like the normal consumer. As a normal consumer, what will regular people want to gain from this kind of machine? If you want to use your 3D printer to actually make functional things for your life, talk about a part breaks on your car, instead of going to try to go to your auto manufacturer, or order it, wait for it to come in. With this technology, you'll be able to actually print that part, install it in your car, and you're off on the road. All right, great. Now, talking about price, what do you expect the price point to be? So that's a two-part answer. The first is the, on the material side. Because we use such a thin coating of the nanoparticles, it's actually only a very small premium above whatever the underlying price of the material would have been. PLA is relatively cheap, Alton Peak more expensive, but the coated material is just a relatively small premium above that. The machine side is again just going to be a small premium above whatever the base printer price was. So a machine like this, you're looking into in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but with our technology, it's just going to be you know one or two thousand dollars above that. The same thing for uh, for the smaller machines. The base price would be much lower. Ours will be you know a certain amount above that. Great. Now, I understand that what this product brings to the table is very, very innovative, and it's something new. You know, I haven't, I never really knew about the weaknesses of, of re conventional 3D printing. I have used 3D printers, well, I've, I've used the products of 3D printers, and they are always kind of flimsy. So, how did you guys get this idea of the, um, of the microtubules and all that? Our CEO worked at uh, Caterpillar for a long time as a product engineer. He used 3D printing as well, but he wanted 3D printing to be truly functional. So then he met uh, Brandon Sweeney, the inventor of this technology, who is working uh, in the Army research labs in, uh, in Maryland. Um, through their combined efforts, they were able to commercialize this technology to allow 3D printing to reach that level of functionality that both of them had always hoped for. 
Great. Now, final question. Have you guys been in any talks with any big uh, companies? And even if so or not, how long do you expect until people really start adopting this technology as a way to, um, as a way to revolutionize the way that they do 3D printing? We've been in talks with a lot of companies. Pretty much most aerospace companies that you'd recognize, a lot of the automobile companies, a lot of uh, large contract manufacturers. Um, we believe that this technology will be commercially ready uh, this summer, probably in June or July, for initial launches. All right, great. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our episode. Now, I would like to say thank you very much. Thank so, you. Yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in another episode.